Well, it's Friday. Yay! What's exciting about a Friday is we're going to go see a Colorado landmark tomorrow that I don't think I've ever seen, even though I'm from here. Uh, I haven't seen it. Garden of the Gods. Some crazy, the one thing about um, Colorado is that the whole Front Range, this whole area used to be a gigantic inland ocean, what, 50, 60 million years ago, something like that. Then you had the uplift that created the Rockies, and then you had a whole bunch of um, erosion, and so Garden of the Gods is like this weird, like, free, like they should have filmed a Star Trek episode there. Well, it has rocks. That's all I know. It's balancing rocks. It has balancing rocks, and it looks really funky. So we're gonna we're gonna get out and what? Hiding my watch. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's it's time. It's, we forgot to do the wrist check. I'll go first. I'm actually wearing uh, my birthday watch from a couple of years ago. I'm wearing my um, I'm wearing my Speedmaster Mark IV. Look at that thing. First birthday, I say you can buy anything within reason. And you know, I, I, and I, I got this for a great deal. I got this for a great deal. It said it was water damaged and the and and the and that it was missing a seal and it was like that the it had all these rubber bands around it. And, but I was looking between the rubber bands and I was like, what the loom looks really good and the watch looks really clean and the brushing looks nice and it's got the original bracelet with the Omega clasp and. And I got it, and uh, what was, and I was flabbergasted. the The seal that it was missing, seal, was actually the little rubber O ring gasket. These watches have an outer case, and then the watch and the crystal and everything, the movement is inside basically like a cartridge, and it snaps into this outer case and is held there with a rubber ring. And so that rubber ring was missing, which is why there were there were rubber bands all around it. So I replaced that, and then I serviced it, which was a bucket of fun. Why is the dog whining? Why is the dog down here? Here, you can talk about what I'm wearing while I go investigate. <laughs> and Sabrina is wearing this. She's wearing the Brad Pitt. The Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What are you doing down here, doggy? He's like, my chair! My chair! Okay, we're going to have a dog positive episode. Oh, shit! I'm sorry. What the hell? <laughs> Okay, let's try that again. Okay, the lights are still green. Doggy, what, calm down. Anyway, but here, here's your watch back. I love it. I think it's so super cool, and I'm super happy to have it. The first thing she looked at it, she was excited, and she was like, it's so ugly. It's so ugly. <laughs> but it's all good. I love it. Yeah? Uh-huh. How's it been? The, the, on, the, on, the, on the bench, it kept great time. Yeah, but when I had my appointment, I looked at it, and it said the exact time. The nice thing is, is that it's 28.8 BPH, so Whatever it's... Whatever that means. Uh, well, the beats per hour, so it's like the slowest watches you'll have will be 18,000 beats per hour, and then you have like a lot of like the Seiko chronographs and 6309s, they're 21,600 beats per hour, then you have 28,800 beats per hour, so the more finely you divide, the more teeth you have on the escape wheel, the more finely you're dividing the time, and, it, and it, what it can do is it runs at a higher rate, and then you, it gives you better accuracy. If you go to 36,000 BPH, those things are like lasers. He's going to be on top of you. Is he? Get rid of my sword. What? Why are you Come holding here. your sword? I know, because I like looking at it. Rocket. Come here. Rocket. Don't break my picture. Come on. Stay. Rocket. He can't figure it out. Anyway, so. Ow! You're happy with the watch. Yes, I'm happy with the watch. I'm not happy the dog is poking me with his nails. Well, what are you going to do with the dog? Should I remove the dog? I don't know. He doesn't know what's going on. Fuck it. Come here. Come on. Okay, let's go on. Okay. So we got... Six pages of questions. A lot of comments about that watch. Uh... <laughs> you don't have to be here for this if you don't want. No, it's just a lot. I'll have the dog read the questions. Really? I'll, or I'll read it for him using a dog's voice. <laughs> And that would be... ruh ro raggy I knew it. <laughs> Is that how you talk? Is that how you talk? Sorry, that's my talking to cute things voice. Okay, from Jonathan Burns. Great video, Spencer. Thank you. You say you got that Citizen 7 Star from Japan. From which website do you source watches like these? Don't want to ask a magician to give up his tricks, but any information can be helpful. Love these old Japanese watches. This is a this is a comment on a for sale video I have for my Citizen Seven Star 
um, from 1968, which, by the way, is for sale on the website. It's a it's a it's a cool watch. It's sort of like a compressor style case, but it's totally original. Um, I buy basically everything I have from eBay. Unless somebody writes me and wants to like trade something in or sell something to me directly, I've looked at like buying on like Yahoo Japan and stuff like that. But I, I don't know. I, you have to like have like a buyer account with like Rakuten or something, and you have to pay the money up front so you have money in an account. And I know lots of people have done it. I just honestly, I've never cared enough to deal with it. <laughs> That's nice. I no, well, it's I like beating up local watches that I can restore. I know. That's what I want. Um. From Walter Alvarado, as far as the Arnie reissue is concerned and the LCD screen expected lifespan, the solution would be to send it to you for repair in five to seven years. I won't be able to get the parts. By that time, you might be caught up in taking on more projects. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I, I'm definitely not going to be caught up this year. and it's. I keep pushing back. I've been telling people the beginning of 2020, It's we're going to be into 2020. We're going to be into twenty from anywhere near it. I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still over a hundred jobs deep. <laughs> I, it, I, I just couldn't say no to anybody, and so all this work showed up. Well, all this work showed up. You're taking away. At, at a certain point, I was getting like fifteen jobs a week. Fifteen I jobs in. It was unbelievable. Uh -huh. I can't believe our mail lady doesn't hate us. Because we give her a good tip at Christmas. We do, <laughs> and she likes our dog. Yes, from. Y2K tube. Concerning the LCD screen expected lifespans, Nikon back in the 80s had the model F3 with a similar notice lifespan only seven years. Um, only recently are they beginning to dim 30 plus years later. Oh, I don't want to say the next one. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm blushing. Are you? Yeah. He said something nice about Sabrina. Thank you. Uh, you know, I don't know what the rationale is. And as Saul Brooks says, maybe it's just CYA stuff. What? Cover your ass. Oh. From Charles Bronson, love you guys. We love you guys, too. Oh, yeah, I love Charles Bronson, absolutely. You're, I mean, you're the greatest. I mean, everybody loves Death Wish. But the best thing about you, of course, is your third wife, Jill Ireland. Oh, no, she was so cute. and But she also, she played Spock's love interest on um, Far Side of Paradise. Remember when they had the flowers that blew up in their faces and Spock started, like, feeling lovey? Yes. His girlfriend was Jill Ireland. That's, that's this person's wife. But there are other Charles Bronsons in the world. No, there's only one. There's only one. <laughs> and he's speaking to us about watches from Beyond the Grave. I'm just going to be like a tomato. Why? The entire video. Why? <laughs> because. You remember that episode, don't you? Yes, I do. I didn't know the person was dead. Who, Jill Ireland? I don't know. I, th I think she might be still around. I don't know. I don't know. I have, I'm have. i just red. I, that's why I'm like this. You're not red. What doggy? I'm not? No, you're not red. You're fine. You're not red. You're not. Oh, good. <laughs> doggy, would you calm down? From Super Cruise. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. I recently did a restoration and overhaul on a 76 Seiko 2205-0050 ladies dress watch. Everything was great until it came to service the mainspring. Try as I might, I could not manage to open the mainspring barrel. The barrel looks like it is split in the middle, but even with a sharp knife blade, I could not manage to open it. Even tried putting it on a hard surface and pressing down the outer edge of the gear teeth and no good. Rather than focus... Uh, force the issue and damage the barrel I left it alone. There is a note in the technical guide that states the mainspring barrel does not need service and is greased from the factory. I know better but could not open the barrel. There was no black slurry around the arbor and the arbor ports look good. The outcome of the overhaul was good but wonder if you have run into similar issues when serving 2205As. Yeah, I mean in the old days Seiko would just sell complete barrels. Uh, I have, it's been a long time since I've serviced a 2205 because I don't take them because they're a pain in the butt. Um, what doggy? Uh, but I do, I did get the mainspring barrel open. I, I think if I remember correctly, I had to actually use an X-Acto knife and actually roll it back and forth in that split. 
uh, to get to the point that it started to open. Maybe it has to go to the bathroom. Maybe, I don't know. Here, let me give me the questions. Um, any case, I do remember getting it open, but if you're getting a good result, then that's that's fine. I, I always prefer to clean the clean the things if I possibly can. Rocket, would you go go get? Um but I mean if you're getting a good result, really that's all that matters. Uh because I mean like if it was here, right, and I was working on one and I was I have a number of two two oh fives, I have a good amount of them. And I'd, I'd probably look at it and say, screw it, and see if I could get it open. And if something went wrong, I have another barrel. I could just use another barrel. Not that I like destroying parts. It's just that I would have... I'm working with a safety net, uh, which a lot of people out there are not. It is that if you destroy a part, you don't have a replacement. I, I have replacements. I don't, I'm not cavalier with my stuff, but if I break a part, I can probably... I'm not going to bonk it. Don't bonk it. Why is there a macaroni noodle on the floor? You'd have to ask your daughter. Okay, so you're right down there. Dog was like, what are you doing? Why are you letting me out? Where are you going? Where am I? Ah. From Stephen Rand. Hi, guys. Great mail call. Very much enjoy these. Sabrina, I just picked up the Prospects Diver. Save the Ocean model SBD Y027 JDM. Black coated steel case with blue to black dial. Great color combo and pairs awesome with an Uncle Mike's. The stock bracelet is hard on the eyes. Sorry, no. Save the ocean whales text anywhere. I still don't know if they if they give a portion to the to anything or if it's just vanity. I don't know. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Well, oh well, I looked at it, but I'm not gonna get one because I don't like the color that shade of blue because someone I am not fond of likes that shade of blue and so I'm gonna pass on the, if it said save the whales or whatever that'd be pretty pretty cool but it doesn't mm -hmm. from Peter Piccolo 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 like a piccolo uh, referring to my my shirt from last week it's spooky Mulder see someone did notice yes because I wore it for the uh, Friday the 13th and I was like nobody noticed my shirt somebody did notice I'm so happy from Lane Edwards, hey guys, I know you're busy. However, I have an idea for a fun video. Would you mind doing a SUA Greatest Hits video showing us some of your favorite and oddball watches from SUA? I'm only asking because you're probably the only person that has most, if not all of them, in one place. Also, I found a Speedmaster reissue, the 7011 zero bh zero in blue kind of cool affordable alternative to the original 7828 or 7838 speed masters that's pretty cool um the reason I, I brought up this question is because um i actually bizarrely i'm not a hoarder uh, i never have been and so i um i, I actually don't have I, i've owned i don't even know how many watches i've owned I've sold the majority of them. Um, if I have a watch and I upgrade or I'm not wearing it, I, I tend to, for me, the joy is really is bringing in the new watches and restoring them. And then after, unless it's a very special watch, I look at it, I'm like, and it doesn't get worn anymore. And I want to send it off to a new home and have somebody enjoy it. So, I, I mean, I could kind of do a Sue of Greatest Hits. I have a lot of them, but like, I don't own a 6306. Um, Did you ever? Oh, yeah, many. Many of them. I sold my last one to Brian Sindler, Silver Surfer, beautiful watch. But I looked at it and I'm like, I'm not gonna wear it. If it was a hand winder, I would wear them, but they're not hand winders. And I have a mental problem about hand winding. Also, more and more these days, I'm really preferring watches with active loom. So I don't have a million watches here. I prefer to restore them and then I kind of move on. And you know, that's the joy for me is to get that old broken thing and make it live again. But it's not a bad idea. Mm -mm. From Adam Abelson. Your wife always seems to be thinking about other stuff and staring off in other directions. Almost seems that like she's not into this for the most part. Meh. That's not true. <laughs> People are capable of doing multiple things at once, especially with their brain. And so she's fully up on what's going on. But she's also thinking about all the other shit that we've got happening. Well, and also there's a bunch of books in front of me, so I don't know. I'm looking at the books. Right. I don't look at the screen either. When she's reading, I'm like this. <laughs> looking around all over the place i am listening to him and i'm listening to you well obviously you have to answer the question it's true no we trust me it's i understand perception is reality but in this particular case we're invested yes 
uh, from AB Cuber. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. I have a Seiko M159510 LCD chronograph, but the display is very dim. You can only see the display from the side. Also, the numbers change very glitchy. What's wrong with it, and is it worth investing in it? Uh, that's a Steve Jobs watch, I believe. Um, well, I, I know he had an M159. I don't know what the specific submodel was. Um, I remembered my phone this time for just this. Uh, there are a couple things going on. The dim numbers um, are because the... Uh, Oh God! The polariz polarizing filter is failing. Uh, it's it's a permanent part of the circuit. Uh, I know some guys on the the computer watch forum, uh, which is an English forum. Is it computer watch? Yeah. It does it have a light bulb? Uh, yes, I believe it does. Well, they always suck on anyone that I, you've had or I've right, had. Right, but the display it should be nice black letters like that. Uh -huh. Um, and so this is the digital watch forum. But anyway. That, so the first thing is is that you've got the you've got to have the polarization filter on the top, but as it fails, you're not going to see you're not going to see those numbers come up unless you're at a weird angle, uh, and that's what happens. Guys in the digital watch form have experimented with basically adding either getting rid of the old stuff and putting new on because you can do that, but with mixed results because the LCD screens are delicate. Um, as for the glitchy numbers. The way that works is those LCD things are like a, they're like a square glass, molded sandwich of glass, right? And it has contacts on the top and the bottom, and the circuit has all these little um, brass fingers that come up and contact the underneath of that. That those contacts need to be cleaned, and the underneath of the LCD need to be cleaned. Uh, and so what you're happening is, if you look at the servicing guide, it'll give you, it, it shows you. All the segments and it shows you the circuit and where they are so if you have a dead segment you go and you're like okay it's this one here and you go and you clean that one um but the problem is is that if you're if you're if your polarization filter is bad then you're kind of whistling dixie um a, the normal answer would be to simply replace the screen but they're made of unobtainium so that's not helpful it would be very expensive to work it and you can get an m159 for not a whole lot of money sorry from Rick St. John, love this video. I have the same model, manufactured July 81. What watch? Uh, it's a 6309 Dive watch. Navy Exchange in 1983 when I first went on active duty and have always loved the look, feel, and quality of the Seiko automatic watches. So impressed by watching just how well these are all built. Mm, yeah, no, I mean, that's one of the reasons why they're so collectible now is because Seiko did an amazing job. I mean, the, everything they did, the case design is beautiful. They're solidly made. They're cased beautifully. The internal structure, the casing is awesome. Um, they're just, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful system. Like their casing system, in my opinion, blows Rolex away. It's so much easier to deal with. It's just as secure. Uh, it's, it's much easier to deal with and to take out. I just, Rolex's system with these weird screws that you have to uh, screw in to loosen the movement, to turn it. After you pull the crown, you don't have to do anything. You're going to hit me in the face one of these days. Whap. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's no, I, they're, they're great watches and they've stood the test of time. From Crim Ferret. I have a Seiko 7548700H. I picked it out as a graduation gift from high school still on the original strap i've changed the battery myself a number of times with the proper tool for the job the o-ring as well and always have used silver cells i've also replaced the spring bars as needed i still enjoy wearing it the funny thing is it's probably way more in fashion now than when i originally got it the loom is dim now but the orange dial is just as bright as the day i got it that's a rare watch that's the, the it's not quite as rare as like the 7000 C, but the 7000H, it's basically, it's a 7548, but with an orange dial. Can I look it up? Sure. Uh, the the fact that you've got the original loom on that watch is, is a huge percentage of the price, of the value of that watch. Uh, if it's still clean, if the loom is still white, if the hands are still clean, those are... Those are good watches. Those are good watches. I, I always get oh, the... Oh, one of those. Yeah, I always get the... Can, here, you want to show the, the yeah, nice people? Yeah, I just wanted to... Which one took a picture? Oh, no, that one, I guess. Yeah, oh, there it is. All of its glory. 
Yeah, there's one, the 7000H versus the 7000C. One had a gold insert and one had a silver insert. And I don't remember which one that was, I think. Great watches. It's amazing you still have yours. Do you still have the box and the paperwork? Okay. One, well, two pages down. From... Oh, my God. We still have four pages left? Jesus. Okay, go on. <laughs> well, one is not full. Oh, well, that's on three pages. Uh, my earliest, oh wait, from Cussing Monkey. The, my earliest memories of my dad all include a Seiko dive watch on his wrist. I don't know what happened to his first one, but he did give me his 7002-7000 and his SNE-022 a few months back. And I'm so glad I found your videos. My 7002 has a remarkably similar backstory. It was bought brand new by my dad while he was stationed in... Subic Bay? Subic, Subic Bay. Philippines. Mm -hmm. He actually bought it from one of my uncles who owned a jewelry store in Olongapo. Mm -hmm. I was pretty stoked to notice its tan loom after hearing you mention it. I always assumed it was just faded. And for a final coincidence, Dad put the 7002 into a drawer when the second tan fell off the post and he bought the SNE-022. I, too, am blessed with an original unmolested Filipino survivor watch. Hopefully your follow-up vids will enable me to get that hand back on. Thanks for the great content. It's great that you've got that watch. Uh, and the I, reason I wanted this comment is because... I don't know. There's I always there's always this misunderstanding. People think that I, I, I just I wake up every morning and think, how am I going to dump on Filipino watches today? It's not that at all. The only reason I talk about that is because the vast majority of watches we get here in the United States that are from the Philippines are ones that were badly abused and sent here. It's not that everything <laughs> what. Waking up in the morning and be like... God damn Filipino watches. It's nothing like that at all. Absolutely not. And like the Filipino Watch Club, those guys have some amazing stuff. Uh, it's just that it's easy It's easy money to ship off dead broken watches up here and then hopeful people, you know, buy them hoping that they're a nice thing and that they can get for less money. And it's just, it's a problem. Um, and so it's nothing about philippines or the philippine people or any of that kind of stuff it's the watches that the majority of the watches that make it out of the philippines to here they tend to be problematic um your watch with the tan loom those they're so cool and a lot of times people don't really they don't really they didn't know what they were i remember people would would say that they were relooms but it's so cool because instead of having that that flat printed loom it's actually it's an older style puffy loom and they it's and it ages like tritium. I don't know what the heck this stuff is, but it's super cool. As for putting on the hand, you just need a, a hand press. They're they're cheap. You can get them. Pull the movement. You get the hand. You put the hand back on the... Pull the movement. Put the movement on the inside the case back for fun. Pull the hand out. Pair of tweezers. Very gently put the hand tube on top of the pinion. Use your hand setting tool and just gently press it into place and it should hold. And that should, that's, that should be it. From Seiko Scar. Hi, Spencer. When did Seiko stop manufacturing the 7S26A movement? I think in the 2003, 2004 range. I, 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 you'd have to, but I'm guessing. But I think in that range. I hear Sebastian. Yeah, I hear them too, and the door's not latched. Well, honey, why don't you answer a few questions? Uh, this is a really long one, if you can listen. Oh, well, I'm, I'm here. Oh. From Andrew Warner. Hi, guys. Just a reply regarding my misaligned 6309 chapter ring from the last video. I'm pretty certain the watch is original. It was a sock drawer find bought from an eBay seller who clears out estates in the San Diego area. It was very dirty when I got it and had the original scratched crystal and also the rotating ring was seized so I doubt it's a rework watch I got the watch serviced and I checked the images the watchmaker took and there is a tab at the 2 o'clock position on the dial yep. is this the one you referred to Yes. the printing on the dial is also very sharp not blurry with the weird green loom like the aftermarket one so I think it's original mm -hmm. not sure what's causing the issue it was misaligned before and after the watchmaker serviced it so it doesn't look like they were able to change the alignment Sorry for the long reply. Must be a misprint. Uh, I'd I'd be interested in seeing a photograph because that's rare. I haven't I haven't seen that before. Um, because they those machines when they printed them they indexed to that slot in the bottom, and so it was it was indexed every single time. There'd be some there'd have to be some kind of misalignment when they were printed for that to be the case. But send me a picture. From 
Michael Ackenbach. Uh, is the watch covered with black plastic around the bezel? How stiff and strong is the plastic cover? Any idea? What are you talking He's about? He's talking about the new warning. Well, you know, it, it just so happens that actually yesterday a cat knocked the Arnie off of the uh, off of the windowsill, uh, and it fell four feet, a little over a meter, down onto a wooden floor. And, Darn cat! And it didn't. It didn't. It took no damage at all. The stuff feels like a. I don't know what it is. It feels like a very dense, high impact plastic. It doesn't feel delicate or weak at all to me. It feels. Almost like ceramic, but it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. It 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 it, it clicks like plastic. Uh, I think it's quite durable. I don't have any fears about it snapping. From Sean Cody, I have a herd of bullheads. <laughs> Great video on one of my favorite watches. I had no idea that you were a citizen guy, Sean. I had no idea about that. I mean, granted, we only interact really for Seikos and Rolexes, but. Yeah, you wrote me yesterday and you were like, hey, I, if I'd known you needed those parts, I have a bunch of 8110 parts watches. Well, I wish I would have known that too. But because I didn't know that, I had to go whole hog on this thing and do a full bore restoration. And I got to do repairs I've never done before. But it might be nice to put the donor 8100 watch that I s took apart to get parts for this thing and be able to put it back together. That'd be nice. Anyway, but we always learn about other people, don't we? From Lucky Gold Panda. Love these Citizen Bullheads. I have a black dial 679356 from 1980. I was beginning to wonder what was going on with Sabrina's watch. She's really lucky to get to wear that. Does all the scratches on the plates affect the movement in any way or does it just look bad? Having now worked on one of these movements, how do you think it compares to Seiko's Kronos? Uh, generally, the scratches didn't do anything except for the place where where the scratching was actually the, it removed one of the two banking pins for the for the for the pallet fork. That's what all that scratching was there. One of those pins was just gone. I had to recreate one with a very fine piece of uh, brass um, rod, basically from jeweler supply. Um, I, I mean, unless there's a scratch that is actually impeding something like um, something moving, something turning, or if it impacts like a, a jewel or something, it's fine. If it does, then I just remove the burr and we go from there. The technology is great. It's tightly built. Um, it's interesting because it's a flyback. It doesn't, and, and citizens seemed to be very concerned with damage to the chronograph mechanism from hard resets. They specifically mention it in the... Um, in the servicing guide and so they have this sort of special extra added lever on the reset which is like this s-shaped thing it's like a shock absorber and so when you reset this thing it doesn't go bunk back to zero it's like this and it slides back or maybe i lubed it incorrectly i don't know but it's i mean but the quality is great quality is great the only problem with this watch was that it had been so hideously abused and it had been stripped for parts and if it wasn't for that it'd be fine it, it, and obviously it came back to life and it's it's a nice watch now mm -hmm. from jeremy pedotti got this model in steel finish and gold dial found a period correct citizen bracelet to fix the head on and it's a peach Dial and movement work perfectly. This design is so 70s, and along with the Pogue are my favorite Japanese chronographs. Look forward to seeing you complete the work, Bravo. Yeah, it's uh, as soon as I can figure out the whole crystal question, I'm there. Your neck is being weird. Well, sorry about your neck. It's okay. Uh, Mr. Gino Hydra. I suspect these particular... Hail Hydra. <laughs> I suspect this particular movement could be an Indian Southeast Asia special, a.k.a. just cobbled together well enough to make it tick and sell. Crazy amount of work to get this watch working, and one of the reasons I'm extremely hesitant to get myself an 8110A chronograph in general, as it's hard to find one that isn't either a Southeast Asia special or beaten and abused to the grave. I mean, that's the thing. Don't be like me. Don't do what I did, which is to buy a watch that clearly had water intrusion issues. Um, I didn't know about it being stripped for parts, but I mean, I bought you it from gambled. The, I did gamble, but I bought it from the UK. And the problem is, is that there are, and this isn't my opinion, this is true. There are a number of resellers in the UK who buy watches in bulk 
from the Philippines. Again, these bad abused watches and that they'll get them for cheap and they get boxes of them. And we know this because we've seen watches for sale from the Philippines on eBay and then they're sold along with a bunch of other watches and then the same exact watch will pop up in the UK. There's one seller in Bath who does this a lot. So this watch could have come from Southeast Asia. And it, it, I mean, it's possible. I mean, some of the repairs, the crazy stupid repairs like using glue for the diafix setting. <laughs> Why? I don't, be, well, because. Are you supposed to put glue in no. a watch? <laughs> no. Glue is not one of the things that goes inside a watch. The, <clears throat> the lower diafix setting for the escape wheel was like, was there, but again, there was all this scratching around that area. And that whole diafix setting, the way those work, that's like a cap with a jewel hole, and then it has a spring on the top of it, and it's a cartridge. It's a whole thing that you like plug in. And it's supposed to be a snap fit, right? And so I was like, this thing had all this brown crap all over it. Like, is it rust? What is this stuff? And so I'm starting to pull it off, and I'm like, it looked like really old school glue. And I'm like, he glued this thing in? Because I need to get the cap off of the jewel so I can clean it. I, I have to. So I started using solvents on it, and sure enough, it started coming clean. And then the whole thing just went burk, and it just walked out. And I was like, you're kidding me. So I went, and I looked at that other citizen that I looked at for parts, broken citizen. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's just a cartridge. And I, and I popped that setting out, and I went to put it back into this main plate, and it just fell out. What now? I think Sebastian went into Sadie's room because I just heard her scream. Ah, 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 ah. And anyway, but so I had one that was absolutely correct, absolutely correct, and the hole just went boop. For some reason, the hole had gotten opened up, and the diameter was too wide. So I had to do all this crazy work to basically close that hole up and to get it to function properly again uh, to we could get a friction fit. Uh, and, and it works now, but it was a, it was a lot of work. Um, anyway, nuts. Okay, I don't know why this discussion happened. Well, then don't worry about it. What? I don't know. You, you put it there for a reason. I did. From Tonio Martinez. How cool is old Broncos colors really think the new look lost all its spirit? Oh, yeah, I was wearing my Broncos uh, hoodie. Uh, oh. It's one of the things that there's a lot of... Sorry for people who don't follow American football or don't care about the Broncos. Um, <laughs> the owner of the Broncos... Pat Boland died recently, and people talk about the old colors, and you were just asking about this. People lionize him as being this great guy, Pat Boland, ushering sees this, you know, this in era of winning. Well, the thing is, is that that old colors and the old logo on the helmet were changed from being the Denver D to being just the Bronco on the side of the helmet because Pat Boland was threatened to take the com the team and leave Denver. And he wanted to, to have a genericized logo so it wouldn't be tied to the team. So whenever I think about Pat Boland, I always think, you bastard, if you didn't get your subsidized stadium, you billionaire, then, you know, I, I it just... Don't get him started. Well, let's move on to watches because I'm guaranteeing most people don't care about the Broncos. But they should. <laughs> okay. From Phillips de Freville. I can't pronounce anything. I haven't said that in a while. Um, that was a super cool video. I really enjoyed watching it. Thanks, Spencer. I love seeing trash watches come back to life. That, that's the whole thing. The whole reason I'm doing this, I love bringing back dead machines. I love bringing back, you know, abused machines and bringing them back to life and letting them fulfill their purpose again. I just, it's such, such fun. From Jose F. Gonzalez. I thought that by watching this video, even before it was made, I'd muster up the courage to open my octagonal case Citizen 8110 Panda Dial. Instead, I'm curled up in a ball in a dark corner of a room trembling. The takeaway is I'm light years away from having the skill set to even take apart that movement, let alone put it back together successfully. It will have to go to the bottom of the to-do list and keep working on my practice movements. You know, it's... It's just, it's one of those things. This one was special because it was so badly abused. Because every time, I mean, you have one thing that's wrong, even something minor, like say if a jewel got pushed out of place or something, to adjust that jewel, not only have to have the right tools, but you have to kind of have some familiarity with it. And to, to adjust, to do that one weird thing, adjusting a jewel, I can add real time to a rebuild, but if the watch is in good condition, if it hasn't been abused, it can be relatively straightforward. 
but yeah, it's pretty intimidating. And this one, like the plates are multi-part components with all these different levers built into them. And it's not for the faint of heart, but I do want to say you have an octagonal one. That's the only one of these citizen watches that has a stainless case. Okay. Um, from Troy Nacello or Naceo, I don't know. Well, I don't know if it's Spanish. With oh, Naceo? I don't know. Nacello, I don't know. Sorry. 100% incredible. I'd give every watch in my collection for one of these. Thanks for the vid. Do you want every watch in this guy's collection? No, I wouldn't do that to someone. I like my watch. I'm good. I put a lot of love into that watch. It's super special. Well, I hope so. I don't want you to feel obligated to wear it. But if I'm you the one that wanted it, it. If you choose to wear it, that's fine. Are you going to get me the, the strap? Oh, no, I wrote the guy. And we're I'm, I'm hoping we're going to do a collaboration video. Cool. Um, from Randy Novick, how good a timekeeper is it? Excellent. Again, it's 28.8 BPH. Um, it's, so it's basically a high beat. It's, it's clean. It's fast. It's straight. Um, it's, it's, I've got good dial up and good dial down. I've got equal accuracy dial up, dial down. Um, the amplitude really only changes when the chronograph is running versus when it's stopped. Um, and again, that may be a lubrication issue because when it's stopped, it's dragging a couple clutch wheels around and something I need to do a little more research on. Um, but yeah, no, it's great. But even in both conditions, it runs very, very cleanly. Like no noise at all. From Tim Lara, this video is a testament to the power of just diving into it to get something done. Granted, if I just dove into this, the outcome would be more like, I would have been more like landing in a swimming pool with no water in it. Well, you know, a wise man we once knew said that if you wait until you're ready, you'll never get anything done. Well, who said that? I don't know. Your dad said that. I know. I told you the other day I want to, you know, I want to sort of move them. But yeah, dad said that. If you wait until you're ready, you'll never get anything done. I mean, there's there's certain logic to that, but I mean, I'm not going to climb into the nearest 747 and <laughs> shove the throttles to the wall. <laughs> Within reason. Yes. From Todd S., this was terrifying, great work, but all I know is that I'm sticking with Seiko. It's a great watch. It's a great movement. The problems are is this one was abused, and spare parts are even extraordinarily hard to find. <coughs> even compared to Seiko, it's easy compared to this. I had wow. the one missing part that I had to order. I found one in the world, and it had to come from Italy. It's ridiculous. Uh... From Lane Edwards, great job, Spencer. I have a panda bullhead, and it runs great. However, I took it to my watchmaker and was told there are great watches to service as long as they're all together and working. If you need parts, they can be a pain to deal with, mainly the crystal and bezel. I'll chat with him soon and see if he knows about the ceiling issue. Please let us know about the strap. I'd like to get one myself, if possible. Uh, again, with the strap, I'm talking to the guy, and I'm hoping we're going to do a collaboration. On the sealant... I don't, I, I don't know. I don't under, because I, I, I need a diagram of how it's supposed to go. Looking at the original crystal, it almost looks to me like it was an adhesive put on or it was some kind of an adhesive strip that was made in the factory, but I don't know. Uh, it's a funky system. It's, it's rare for me to look at something and not be able to figure out how that. Yes. I'm aware for me to not be able to figure out what in the heck was going on. I love when people buy things. I love you person whose name I'm not going to say because it's privacy. Whoever bought that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> From uh, John Boy of Alaska. If you want to make Sabrina happy, money is involved. <laughs> I know I like people and stuff. With money. I'm joking. I'm joking. Hello, Mr. Boyarski. How are you? Boy of Alaska. <laughs> Spencer, great stuff. I love the Bullhead Chrono Rebuild. In there, you mentioned some aid solution to eat at the Rusted Crew. I have that problem and wonder what's your method. The rest of the old movement is great, but the stem release screw is rusted in place. What you do basically is you make a super saline solution, a lot of salt and, and distilled water, or not even distilled water, just water. Um, and because a brass main plate and rhodium plating and that kind of stuff, Corrosion from salt water won't touch it, but you leave it in there and anything that's like ferric, any metal like iron and steel, any of that kind of stuff will be completely eaten away. And it's uh, it's an old watchmaker's trick um, that I had to learn 
when I was restoring my great uncle's Rolex Explorer, because uh, it had a bunch of screws that were just broken off stumps of rust. Just be aware that if you have any metal on that plate, when you put it in there, that isn't like brass or rhodium or whatever, it will be destroyed. So like with my great uncle's Rolex, there was the, the little teeny tiny post for the minute wheel. I didn't think about it. I should have pulled that. I didn't. And it got rusted away. I had to make a new one. Uh, it might take a few days, by the way. What? The, the rusting stuff away. Oh. Like, just leave it in there and go do something else. From Brad Warren. Hi to you both from the UK. Love the mail call. By the way, I'm constantly learning more about Seiko watches. Quick question. I have a really nice 1986 7C43-7010, which has a small scratch on the original crystal. I dig that it all is still original. Nobody's removed the crystal retainer. It is like new. But does anybody know a good replacement crystal as I have exhausted search for an NOS part? That is... That particular crystal, the seven C's are, they look like a 7548, like a slim case diver watch, same thing. But instead of the crystal being killed in by a snap ring, it's a screw down ring and it has deep, more water resistance as a result. Those crystals are almost exactly like the flat crystals, except they have a tiny little step around the edge. Um, I have no idea. Cousins, you might try cousins. A lot of times cousins in the UK will have some weird stuff that other people won't. Um, another supplier is Perrin, and they're in Canada. Uh, and sometimes they will, because their their Seiko parts guy is really, really simpatico with the with the actual like repair dudes in Seiko Japan. And so he has like personal contacts with them. Sometimes he can contact them and see if they've got something squirreled away in a drawer. Um, uh, it's it's just I don't have an answer for you. I'm so sorry. You tried. From Todd S. Hey, Spencer and Sabrina, do you have your 6139 Arbor Port Jewels made custom? Or yes. is there a source for folks to buy? I have a friend who is doing some 6139 restorations but doesn't know a source for the jewels. The jewels are, um, I would actually, I would just write Adrian Selleck at VintageTimeAustralia.com. And so it's Adrian at VintageTimeAustralia.com. Our jewels are custom made for us, and they're a custom size. Their outer diameter is um, is like a 0 0.005 millimeters larger than the standard. I had to make a tool to to port those holes out. Um, so I mean, ours are available, but you, you, you they won't be a precise fit using a Zeitz tool because there's no Zeitz reamer that fits that. Um, because I again, I had to make my How own. Do you do that. Do what? I don't know. Make things. I don't know, you make stuff. I, I see what is supposed to be there. I see what the thing should look like that will do the thing I need it to do. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, well, it's like it's like looking at a puzzle and you have a missing piece and you're like, oh, okay, it's the puzzles, the piece has got to be that shape. So when I'm doing this kind of weird repair, like making the spring for your quick set lever, I'm like, well, they're obviously there's a tab there. The tab is meant to be pushed back. This has to be pushed back. There has to be a spring. There's a post here that a spring would go around. So it's a thing like this. That's what needs to be there. And it turns out that I was right. I need things to just work. I can't make tools. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those things. Um, uh, I don't know. That's about it. Um, uh, one last thing I really want to talk about. I was amazed at how hot Talking about valuation, these things. This is a 7828-7020. It's a Royal Oak is the nickname people have given it. I'm amazed how hot these are. I sold one and it sold in seconds. And I had, I, I must have had 25 inquiries on Instagram asking if it was still for sale, even though it was sold. I had no idea these were so popular. I mean, they're cool and everything, but this one is available. I have a second one for sale. As Sabrina likes to say, it's not you, you'll never wear it. I've owned a number of these, but I never had any idea they were really hot. So if you're looking, this one is fully sized. It's completely original. It's fully serviced, all original loom. Case is rebuilt. It's got a new, brand new crystal in it. Original case polish, everything. This is a really good example. It's not mint, but it's very good. And it's totally redone. You want to buy one of these, I've got one right here. Right there. And it can be yours. Give me a right. Or write me a note or something. Write you a note? Yep. Send you a, a telegram? Send me a telegram. Why not? Carrier Pigeon? 
That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be really fun. So anyway, we'll report back about Garden of the Gods. Yes. Okay, that's it. Okay. Well, thank you for all your questions, and you want to show your watch one last time, maybe? Uh, look at it. Yeah. It's so cool. It is so cool. Okay, thank you, folks. Bye. Bye.